and welcome back to Let's Play Shin Megami Tensei Devil Survivor Overclock. Last time, we saved Keisuke from certain doom by thwarting his uh, confrontation with Kaido, but we also checked out all the alternative ways that that could go. For this Let's Play, we're going to be following the route where we actually stopped Keisuke from uh, using Yama's power altogether. We killed Yama, unlocked that fusion, and avoided further conflict with Midori and Kaido, so that's pretty good for us right there. Now, before we get into the main video, uh, or rather the main details of the video, new free battles have opened up, and I want to check out the one in Shinjuku real quick. Uh, I've already taken care of this off-screen, uh, just because I was double-checking things to make sure I got everything, and in this battle, uh, let me see, this guy, uh, the, you can find Orthruses who have access to Fire Amp, so already we've been able to collect the uh, major boost for uh, Fire Magic that we missed out on from Cracking from Yama, so uh, yeah, pretty uh, solid situation we got here. One downside of Fire Amp, though, is that uh, it requires strength as a secondary stat to utilize it. So it's going to be a while before uh, I'll be able to use it, and I think Yuzu, uh, yeah, she's just one strength short of being able to use it herself. Uh, actually, Midori is farther away. Midori is usually more balanced. Uh, I think, uh, what about Keisuke? Can he use it? Yeah, Keisuke can use it. So if you want to bring Keisuke out, uh, he does have quite an advantage now being level 48, just because of the effect level scaling has on damage. You can wheel him out with uh, fire amped uh, Agidines, and that would probably do some decent damage. Damage, so, but uh, we're not really too concerned about that. I don't care too much for Keisuke, and he's going to quickly fall behind once our levels uh, catch up to him. The other thing I want to check out is the Ueno free battle. You notice this one isn't marked as a hard free battle, and this is actually a very weird and unique free battle. Uh, I think this is the only free battle in the game that's like this. Damn it! Our guns aren't working! This is bad. We're going to lose the barricade if this keeps up. Look at that! The demons are fighting the SDF soldiers. It'll be bad if they get out. We gotta help them. Yeah. Excuse me, we're here to help. Help us? You're demon tamers. You're not just trying to get out. We wouldn't dream of it. We just want to take care of those demons. I see, thank you. But we have our orders too. We'll have to attack you if you come too close. They're so paranoid. Better make sure we don't get too close to the barricades. So yeah, very weirdly, this is a free battle where there's actually a secondary objective. Uh, you have to stop the demons from killing any of the FDF, SDF soldiers, and you cannot get too close to the SDF or they will begin to attack you. And if you kill them, uh, that also results in a game over. Uh, there's nothing special uh, to get here in terms of skills. The demons here are stronger, but because they're going to be aggressing on the SDF, uh, it's much slower to grind this free battle out than the Shinjuku one. And honestly, uh, towards the end of the day, we'll just get a better free battle to grind for money anyway, so I really wouldn't recommend doing this. Despite it seeming like you have to stick around to see this one out, you can actually just retreat and leave these guys to their fate, and that doesn't affect the game at all, so yeah, that's just what we're gonna do there. But yeah, very weird. Uh, like I said, as far as I'm aware, that's the only free battle in the game that's like that. It's the only one I saw over the course of uh, doing my test runs of the game that I saw that was like that, so not really sure why they put that in the game. Now, we're not actually going to, uh, like, stick to the scene with Keisuke here, but after you recruit Keisuke, you can get a little extra dialogue from him, uh, basically going over his reasons for what he did. Hey, Keisuke, did something happen in high school? What's the matter, Atsuru? Why do you ask me that all of a sudden? Uh, well, maybe it's just my imagination, but, uh, you don't seem as composed as you used to be back in middle school. What makes you say that? Well, when the Laplace male said Midori would be killed, you kind of freaked out. I'd never seen that side of you before, so, I mean, I knew you weren't the type to let bullying slide, but, well, never mind. Atsuru. I was bullied in high school. Huh? Not at first. Actually, it began pretty well for me. But in the second term of my first year, I noticed one of my classmates being bullied. It was awful what they did to him. I tried to protect him so he wouldn't lose heart. You couldn't save him? No, I think I did. He wasn't the target of bullying anymore, to say the least. So, I'm guessing uh, those guys decided to shift their target over to... Yes. It was me. The bullies were weak. They had to bully someone to feel good about themselves. 
Honestly, I was expecting it. I still wanted to save my classmate, so I thought I could take it for his sake. If only... What? What happened, Keisuke? The classmate I rescued joined in on the bullying. What? He knew how painful it was, but he became one of them just to avoid being targeted again. What kind of dick would... That's messed up. I reached out to him and he turned on me. That I could not forgive. Same with that incident with Midori. Those kind of people sicken me, don't you agree? I'm sorry. I'll go and calm myself. Wow. I never knew. Hmm. I think he still went a little too far, though, but I guess I can see where he's coming from. Yeah, probably so. Nothing would change if he fought violence with violence. But yeah, get a little background for why uh, Keisuke seems quite different from uh, how uh, Atsuro recalls him. I believe you can also see this scene uh, if you've uh, taken the route of non-violence with uh, pacifying Yama, but uh, it seems a little more, uh, I guess, in line with the events if you uh, do it via killing Yama. But we're not going to uh, actually uh, stick with that event since you don't need to see it. Instead, we're just going to keep advancing Honda's storyline so that hopefully we can see all the events involving him. So let's just load up the file that I made at the start of the video, go into the Honda uh, scenes, and we've already seen this, so uh, we can just uh, skip through this again. Just uh, explaining comps again, him being weird about it, and there we go. Now, at 1400 hours, a new battle shows up with Izuna and Fushimi, and honestly, we should probably uh, touch base with these two's re to regardless. Uh, with all the information we've managed to gather, we can probably pump them for a little more clarity uh, now that we know what we know. So let's go check out what's going on here. Hey! Why are we on this highway? Where are we going? All right, well, we're just trying to meet up with a special unit, Midori. Uh, people who might know what's uh, going on here. A special unit? Ooh, that sounds cool! If Azuna's there, we might be able to learn something. But if no one's there, we're really in luck. We can get out of here. Hey! We've got demons coming in from behind us! We're in trouble if they attack from the rear. Let's take them out now! Yeah, let's uh, take care of this, and hopefully we can uh, meet up with Azuna and Fushimi uncontested. All right, let's do this. Alright, so we've got a battle here, and this one is not anything too fancy. If I recall, there isn't even any... Okay, there is a skill to crack. Ooh, actually, some good skills to crack here. Get a Zandine and Force Amp. Okay, so uh, let me think about... Uh... You know what, I'm going to set up my team here and see what I can get going, so just give me a moment. Alright, so I didn't make any particular fancy changes here, basically running the same skills, although I did swap out Petra Eyes for Medea on myself. Uh, what I'm gonna have do I'm gonna have Midori do is pop over right here using Kukulin, and I'm just going to uh, Devil Speed right here so that I can hopefully block off this uh, path between uh, the two sections of Highway. And then I'm going to have uh, Yuzu take out one of these Ouroboss formations and have uh, Atsuro just back her up and uh, see if he can take out anything. Uh, this shouldn't be too big a problem. Actually, you know what? Maybe I'll uh, do a bit of a hit and run with uh, Yuzu. Just back her up a little bit so that she doesn't get uh, double teamed by a couple of the Ourobosses, but that should do us good here. Uh, I've got uh, myself and Midori set up for the skill cracks on the... Uh, Lorelei's, so I'll just uh, have uh, Berserker Brutal hit one of the Lorelei's and then have uh, Midori come and mop up, the, mop up the rest of these guys. That's how we're going to handle this. Let's go. Alright, so starting out, nothing too complicated here. Let's just immediately Devil Speed and block off this section and uh, keep these guys from uh, closing in, or at the very least... Hey, what? <sighs> Those kids... It seems they're in the middle of a battle against demons. They're using comps. We have to save them. Use that comp we found yesterday. Is it done charging? Affirmative, sir. I'm ready for action. Good. Activate it! Yes, sir. Activating comp. It worked! We'll finally be able to combat the demons! Right! I command you, demon. Save those humans! 
Are you the one who summoned me, woman? I'll kill- if I kill you, I'll have my freedom. What? I summoned you. Why aren't you obeying me? You gotta form the contract. Yeesh, you guys went into this half-cocked for sure. A contract? What are you talking about? You gotta form a contract with it first, or it's not gonna listen to you. To do that, you gotta beat it. What? Understood. But will conventional weapons have any effect? They will with the harmonizer. You explain the harmonizer's effects. If someone is in its range, they can fight demons. Harmonizer? So anyone within the comp's range gains the ability to fight demons. Okay, got it. Uh, all right. You have my support, Captain. We'll bring this demon into submission. Roger that. So yeah, if enough turns pass, or you get close enough to their section of the highway, Izuna and Fushimi pop out in order to uh, form a demon contract and help us out. But uh, they actually did not know about the contract aspect, so uh, they're going to spend turns uh, chipping away at that uh, Bob Kotha that they just summoned. But uh, you can also have somebody just pop over and take it out for them, which is what we're going to do. We're just going to have Nidori uh, slot on over, take that thing out, and it shouldn't be a big problem at all. Alright, uh, I guess we'll use a brutal hit here. With our huge initiative bonus, we should be able to go before these guys. Uh, Orthrus, I haven't really optimized him for uh, good damage, but he he's fine enough. With uh, all the uh, strong inheritance bonuses we have at this stage of the game, pretty much any team in that I fuse off of a compendium pull will be pretty good. Nice, he's got pierce, so... Another thing in the fusion pool. After taking out a demon, a uh, respawn point will appear for them, or a... Uh, you know, corrupted comp that's just spewing out demons. All right, let's have Atsuro move up here. And we're just going to have Midori immediately take out this Bob Katha for them so that uh, they don't have to worry about uh, dealing with it. Yeah, no problem there. Get some uh, experience for Midori. Not enough to level up, though. Human, you have potential. The contract is sealed. You shall have my power. I am the wings of the battle, Bob Katha. You will see the brilliance of my dark pinions. The contract is sealed? Did we do it then? Good job, Captain Izuna. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So, uh, yeah, that was, uh, fairly anticlimactic. Anyways, even though they said they'd help us, at this point, Izuna and Fushimi are just going to hold back and, uh, stay the line. Okay, so, gotta be mindful of this, uh, Mothman here. He's got a Yim at his disposal. Hopefully, uh, nope, I was hoping that that guy would, uh, actually come up to me and attack me. Unfortunately, we're gonna- oh, no, actually, I'd rather he attacks Atsuro, honestly. Atsuro has the HP to go the distance. These guys are pretty powerful, but, uh, I'm not overly concerned about them. Actually, no, uh, let's use, a uh, Miragi. Seems a bit more sensible. Use a Mazan here, and that should be good. They got, uh, some sizable damage here, uh, oof. Lorelai is kind of on the ropes at that at this moment. Yeah, there she goes. But we've got plenty of demons in reserve, so I'm not overly concerned about that. Hmm, maybe I should have used Mo down there. Ah, jeez, come on, Atsuro. Pull it together, man. Yeah, I should have used Mo down. I wasn't sure who was going to go first there, so uh, sometimes you just got to roll with that. All right, so Lorelai is uh, on the pavement at the moment. If I can get to a turn uh, with uh, Rikarm, we can bring her back in. But if not, then let's just have Atsuro pull in another demon here. Let's see. Uh, you know what? Good opportunity to get some experience for a bad end. So let's have him come in and just uh, do a little bit of cleanup for us. Absolutely decimated. Aside from uh, giving us access to Bufudine and Fusion so that we can hopefully make a Hecate with it, we do actually want a Vile Demon later for a bit of a non-standard reason that'll uh, become apparent when we actually get to it. Alright, first order of business, let's uh, weaken up this uh, Mothman right here. Alright, now we have Zandine at our disposal, and once uh, Midori's turn rolls around, we'll be able to pick up... Uh, pick up... <laughs> Force Amp, so we'll have really strong sand dines at our disposal. And now this path is blocked. They're not going to be able to get past us, so we can uh, take them out uh, no problem. Midori will probably take a little bit of damage here. Ooh, nice. It's always good when we get that uh, that uh, healing uh, proc. Yeah, these guys, no problem. <laughs> it would have been beautiful if that did a lot of damage and he killed himself, but uh, can't always hope for that. 
Oh, right, that was an academic set of skill cracks right there. So now we've all got uh, two uh, magic spells with uh, the corresponding boosts and amps, or two dime level spells with the corresponding amps. So this uh, will expand our offensive options pretty considerably and make them that much more potent. And unlike uh, Fire Amp, uh, most of my characters can actually utilize this, so this is pretty good right here. Yeah, it's uh, incredibly unlikely you'll get through this battle without at least uh, one demon respawning in. If you really, really optimize for it, you can accomplish that, but I, I really don't think it's worth it, so don't concern yourself too much if that happens. This uh, team right here is no problem, especially with the Devil Speed bonus. Uh, let's go for Ice Dance, uh, go for a Brutal Hit on the guy on the left, and a Mazan. Should be no problem. There we go. Now Lorelei is just completely destroyed. We'll have to do a quick tap to finish this guy up. Oh, never mind. Oh, right, yeah, Freeze uh, it overwrites Endure. Just another thing that uh, the Freeze status does for you. All right, uh, whose turn is up next? Atsuro's not going to be able to make it, so we'll just have him bolt tight. Uh, Midori's also not going to be make it. I'll go and finish this off. Let's uh, take another Devil Speed here. Again, just to get the initiative bonus, make sure we go first. Take them out before they can do anything nasty. Uh, these guys can't accomplish anything, uh, or rather, more demons can't come in while uh, we're wasting our turns because these guys are blocking the respawn point. Berserk is going to absolutely destroy these guys. If we're lucky, we might get a Magnetite Overload, and I can swap out uh, Medea with uh, Mowdown, which is really, really good on Berserker. Especially if you've got him fused up like I do. No Overload, unfortunately. Looks like we managed to clear the area of demons. Mission complete. And get a nice little bonus of experience and Maka. Always uh, good to close out some level ups like there. Berserker is getting pretty close to another level up. Uh, Berserker, actually, his level up pattern, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but every demon in the game has a specific level up pattern. And once Berserker levels up uh, two times, he'll have cap strength, which will be amazing. The comp is far more powerful than we anticipated. It should prove useful in our mission. Now, about you children. Why have you come here? Look, we want some answers, bro. Ask us. I'm afraid it's all on a need-to-know basis. We cannot reveal any... Commander, isn't there any way we can enlist their help? Their help? Yes. With all due respect, sir. It's obvious from that battle that their power far exceeds our own. They're skilled with their comps, and they know much more about the demons than we do. Wouldn't it be best for us all to ask for their assistance? I'll concede the point, but we can't ask for help from civilians. Why? Would it hurt our pride as an elite special unit? What? Commander, I volunteered for this to save Tokyo and the lives of its citizens, not to protect the unit's honor. If there's glory to be had here, it's in success, no matter how we achieve it. Hmm. <sighs> You've grown quite a backbone. Forgive me for speaking out of turn, sir. Once the mission is complete, I'll attend. I'm leaving you in charge here. Give these civilians whatever they need to know. You're acting on my orders. I'll take full responsibility. The rest is up to you. <sighs> Commander Fushimi. Captain Izuna, get it done. That's an order. Y yes sir You heard the commander. Come with me. I have something important to tell you. How much further is it? Just past that iron door. I guess you'd know it as the side road that normal vehicles are prohibited from entering. So it does exist. What the? Is this a subway platform? Wow, so the city highway and the subway really are connected. No one can eavesdrop on us here. Demons can't get in either. What I'm about to tell you violates the Official Secrets Act. It'll have to be vague. If you disclose this to anyone, you will face severe retribution by the government. Are you prepared for that? Well, let's get my team's input here. I can't make the decisions for everyone when it's this important. Uh-huh. Yeah, fine with me. This lockdown came about when we discovered that humans are summoning the demons. We know they're being summoned by comps. Comps developed by the Shomonkai. So we chose a day when the Shomonkai would gather in one place and began the lockdown. So this 
lines up with what we figured out so far. The Shomankai have been... For a lot longer than this lockdown has been going on, they've been involved with the process of summoning demons, and it looks like we've got an explicit confirmation that the Shomunkai are the reason for the lockdown happening. So, this was all planned well in advance? How far? We had no time at all. The government panicked when they discovered the existence of demons. So we began the operation without any substantial countermeasures against them. But we couldn't sit back and watch demons continue to increase in number. As we learn more about the demon's power and abilities, our timetable grew shorter. Against the threat of demons spreading worldwide, we had to enact the lockdown that day. That's as simply as I can put it for you. Do you have any questions? Alright, so why not destroy the comps then? Wouldn't that solve the issue? Yeah, if you just collect the comps and release normal people, that should be fine. As I said, some demons can take human form, They've already claimed some of our own. With no way to be sure, no one can leave the lockdown, even if we collect all the comps. No exceptions. Once someone is inside, they're not allowed out. Not even us. There's one other reason for the lockdown. Okay, and what exactly is it? Can you tell us? The government wants to cover up the demon's existence. Until our mission's success is confirmed, they won't release anyone who knows the truth. Then, they never intended to let anyone out from the start. That's how serious this mission is to them. Do you understand now? Damn them. Now, is there anything else you want to know? Well, I want to know how I'm supposed to trust the government after this, but uh, perhaps we should uh, instead investigate uh, what's your deadline for this operation? I'm sure you figured that out already. The numbers the comp shows over people's heads. That's this death clock, isn't it? Yep. Okay, so... Looks like our line of thinking with that, uh, that the SDF had involvement with the, uh, cataclysmic event that was gonna kill everyone within the lockdown. We just got confirmation of that beyond a shadow of a doubt. I see. I thought so. Now that I have a comp, I can see it. This is why rumors of the Judgment Day spread. The day the number runs out, that's the day this mission will end in failure. Speaking of which, um, it seems you have one day less than everyone else. Huh, you don't beat around the bush, do you? That death clock has been a real pain. I'm sorry, but there's no time to waste treading lightly. Let's not mince words. This death clock means you're all gonna die tomorrow, yes? No, we're going to survive, whatever it takes. The death clock can be changed depending on what we do, though it's not easy. But we've changed it before, and we'll change it again. Good to hear. If you all died, this conversation would be for nothing. <laughs> the mission before everything, huh? I don't know, but I'll let it slide for you. Oh, by the way, not everyone can see the death clock. When you form a group, only the one holding the host comp can access that function. So since you're on your own right now, that's not a problem for you. I see. Thanks for the tip. But, if the death clock is accurate and hard to change, our mission's doomed to fail. Damn. We have to avoid that at all costs. Oh, sorry. Is there anything else you want to know? Well, since we're on the subject, what exactly is the... Like, what's going to happen when the death clock runs out? What are you guys gonna do? That's... something I'd rather not answer, but if I must... Okay. Stay calm and listen. After two days, everyone left in the Yamanote Circle will be annihilated. What? I can understand if it's hard to believe, but it's the truth. The people within the Yamanote Circle will be annihilated at the hands of the government. So what, they're gonna, what, drop a nuke? That would be some... That would be incredibly unfortunate. Nothing like that. We can't destroy any more of Tokyo than absolutely necessary. Killing everyone while leaving Tokyo intact? Are they gonna use a neutron bomb? Neutron radiation is lethal while minimizing structural damage, it's true. But it's not fully effective amidst concrete, making it unsuitable for urban areas. Then how are they gonna do it? 
Unfortunately, further details are classified. I can't tell you that. Then we can't believe you. There is no such weapon. You're trying to scare us. Our security policy is strictly defensive. We must always be on guard against occupation. The contingency plan involves many devices set up in Tokyo to take back our city. They remain hidden in people's daily lives. The government's final option. And here's where the side quest with 10-bit on day three finally pays off. If you want to get a payoff for doing all those events, then you need to take this top option right here. And obviously, if you uh, didn't see the events with 10-bit, if you didn't crack his PC, you wouldn't know about this. But based on what we know, it's highly likely that Azuna is talking about the UEM field. How did you find out about that? So it wasn't going to be used on citizens. It was meant for invading armies. But now, they're planning to use it on us, huh? Is this why there was that blackout the same time the lockdown started? I can't answer that. I'm sorry, but I've said all I can on the subject. B but is this final option really going to take care of the demons? If the government goes that far and they don't all die, won't it all be for nothing? Sacrificed everyone, but it didn't work. Whoopsie isn't gonna cut it. Indeed, we won't know for certain. Commander. In truth, we don't have any conclusive evidence that our final option will do its job, but it's the best chance we have. At the very least, it'll wipe out the comps and the demon tamers. But I want you to understand. We're working hard to finish this mission without resorting to the final option. Yes, Captain Izuna, but... If this information gets out, it would only cause more panic. What good can come of telling them this? Maybe none, but I want to believe in them. You've seen the reports on their actions that the others compiled, haven't you? Yes. There's no mistake as to their intentions. Still. Commander Fushimi walks away deeper into the station. So the government has no plans to let people in the Yamanote Circle out of the lockdown. Don't be so hasty. As I said before, that's the last ditch, final option. We're doing our best to end this without resorting to it. Okay, well, you seem pretty sincere, Izuna, so I'll... I'll trust you. Thank you. But... that option is out there. In the worst case scenario, we'll all die. Isn't that so? Yes. That's right. What a load of crap! If nothing changes in the next two days, everyone in this lockdown will be murdered. Don't they know how many of us are left inside here? How can a government kill its own citizens that easily? You think it was easy? Can you imagine the burden this country is facing by locking down Tokyo for this long? Tokyo is the axis that Japan revolves around. The economy, the government, everything. And all that is locked down. But still... Why do we have to die, too? If demons were used throughout Japan in crimes and terrorist attacks, what would happen? We'd be powerless to stop it. The police, the SDF, everyone would be helpless. To save the country, it may become necessary to ravage its capital. I need you to understand that. Th then at least extend the deadline. What can we do in just two days? Think carefully. As of now, no demons have crossed the blockades. But tomorrow, who knows? And it's not just demons. If one comp makes it out, we fail. No, a week is too long for the lockdown as it is. If we really wanted to be sure, we'd have exercised the final option at once. Yet the government dispatched us here. Think hard about what that means. You might succeed in this? I can't guarantee anything, but there must be a way to save everyone. We volunteered for this mission because we believed that. Knowing all this might only cause you more trouble, but if it raises the slim chance of this mission's success, please help us. Oh, we're already on that. We'll help. I mean, we don't exactly relish the idea of being microwaved. You have my deepest thanks. Lastly... One more favor. You're not to tell anyone what you learned here. 
Understood? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, given the death clock, the cat's kind of out of the bag on this, but knowing the exact reason and most people thinking it's inevitable probably would not be a good idea. So for the sake of uh, the people remaining in the lockdown who haven't gone completely nuts, we really can't let them know about this. Thank you. If it got out that the government might kill everyone in two days, the people inside the Yamanote Circle would start to panic. We'd never get control back. I'll be counting on you. I can't believe a weapon like the UEM field is real. It sounds like a sci-fi story. If we hadn't heard the PSC law rumor and Azuna's story, I wouldn't have believed it. But that aside, if we don't do something about the demons in two days, we'll all be killed. Huh. You don't need to tell me twice. I understand. You seem pretty calm about all this, Atsuro. Aren't you afraid to die? Huh. Of course I'm afraid. It's just panicking about it won't do us any good. We just have to bite the bullet and get it done. But, but... If we don't do something about the demons, we can't get out of here. We only have two days. Izuna and Fushimi are doing their best, but I don't think we can expect much from them. Yeah, it's up to us. Let's go. Yeah, we can't rely on anyone else to handle this anymore. If anyone's gonna do something about the demons and lift the lockdown, it's gotta be us. I'll do it! If the hero gives up, then all hope is lost! I'll take care of all those demons and save the people in distress! Oof, that was, uh, yeah, that was, uh, quite a bit to, uh, take in there. Quite the scene that we had, and at this point, several new scenes open up for us to see, uh, in addition to the ones that we've seen previously, such as Keisuke, Honda, and Jin. So, new scene with Yuzu, new scene with Azuna, probably uh, reaffirming certain details, and hey, been a while since we've seen Amane. Well, why not check out what she has to say? Your car is ready. It seems we were able to secure the roads. Then let us be on our way. Hmm? Go on ahead. I'll catch up to you in a moment. Hmm? As you wish. After confirming that Azuma is gone, Amane approaches you. He and those who follow him, we meet for the first time. I have been waiting for this opportunity to greet you all. Well, you aren't Amane. Who are you? Impressive. You discerned that I am not this girl. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Metatron's subordinate, the Angel Remiel. It is given to me to watch over the one who resurrects. The Angel Remiel? Metatron? Metatron is an angel close to him. It is through Metatron that he speaks his will. Metatron and his cohort monitor demons so that they do not ascend into heaven. I now speak to you with Amane's cooperation. Amane's cooperation? So the Shomunkai is carrying out the will of angels? No. The teachings of the Shomunkai diverge from our will. But Amane has heard my words. She is in accord with our goal. I have revealed myself to you in order to save humans. If you'd done it sooner, things wouldn't have gotten this bad. He has warned humans before, but they ignored him, became debased, and summoned demons. All of this is what man has brought upon himself. If you cannot redeem your own sins, then man's future holds only destruction. This is an ordeal given unto humans. Whether man will settle it himself, or depend on his intervention. If it becomes clear that it is beyond man's capacity, he will save mankind at once. But if he were to do so, man would forever live under our control. Man's autonomy is valuable to him. He kindly watches to see if man can redeem himself. We, his servants, all hope for mankind to settle this ordeal by itself. What's so kind about doing nothing until the last second? As I said, it is all so that man may have his autonomy. 
Okay, then what do we have to do to maintain that autonomy? Mankind is at a crossroads. Either they will walk with demons, or with him. Eternal damnation and eternal salvation are always opposite sides of the same coin. As you know, this lockdown is his will, enacted by man's cooperation. This is a vital stage that may be man's last turning point. Okay. Uh, I kinda, I'm kind of tempted to stay the, say this, but l let's stay objective here and try to get more information. So you're saying this is a vital stage. How so? Yes. That is why I had been waiting for an opportunity to meet all of you. Depending on how man navigates this ordeal, your judgment day may be at hand. You must know what that means, yes? Mm. <laughs> I mean, uh, we did get kind of a, kind of a, well, you know. No, we will not annihilate you. But man will be deemed unworthy to stand on his own, and will be dealt with accordingly. If man deals with this nascent mistake, if they dispose of the demons properly, they will earn his forgiveness, and this world will once again be entrusted to man. There will be a great reckoning tomorrow. A battle against the all-consuming fire awaits you. And I'm guessing you mean Belial here? Correct. He bears the name of Bel, and he is fire incarnate that incinerates all. When you defeated Belder, could you feel his power flow into you? The other Bells are most likely aware of your victory. If that is so, it is yet more inevitable that you will battle against them. Extinguish the flame and protect the key to open the world. It will eventually be the salvation for you and your companions. If there is anything you would know, I shall tell you now. And we get a whole host of options to ask her about, and we have to ask every single one of them. So let's go. Should you prove incapable of dealing with the demons on your own, man will be stripped of his freedom. He will walk a new path, dictated by us. And if you prove completely irredeemable, your history will come to its end. Jeez, try not to make me feel too good about this. Alright, what are the angels up to? Your government enacted this lockdown, but it was we who instructed them to do so. We angels have been observing how man will deal with demons in the lockdown. We seek to determine whether man, who has betrayed his will for so long, is still worthy to be given care of this world. We observe how you came to meddle in power that is not yours, and how you will atone. If our decision is unfavorable, it will be your judgment day. Yes, the key is to quell the chaos ensuing from the demon's appearance in the city. The demons overrunning this city were released into the world by the hands of man. A shameful act for creatures that he entrusted with this world. This lockdown is the wages of that sin as well as a chance to observe man's reaction. Man may prove his virtue by removing the evil that he has introduced to God's world. He showers his limitless love upon mankind. The perfect response to his love is for man to repent his sins and overcome his ordeal. I am here only to provide a beginning to that effort. I warn you, to search for the summoning server is to place this world in peril. I will not interfere with your actions during this ordeal, but if one without power seeks that server, this world will perish. That is why I will not tell you now. Heed my words. We angels are always watching man's actions. Remember that. Ah, uh, come on, can't you help us? It pains my heart. Please do not make me repeat myself. Mankind brought this disaster upon themselves. But he has answered your sin with mercy, and given you seven days of reprieve. However, 
If you do not rectify your situation on your own, your sin cannot be forgiven. Ignoring your sin and trying to save yourself will only bring about the same result. Okay, I'll... well, I'll, I'll stew on that while we decide what we're gonna do. We who serve him hope for your redemption. May his blessings be with you. She's gone. Hey! So that wasn't Amani? Was it actually an angel? Yeah. At least, it seemed completely different than how Amane usually is. Damn it! Did you hear all that selfish stuff it was saying? But now we know angels are behind the lockdown, and we know how to get it lifted. We have to do something about all the demons, right? But what? Let's... This seems a little unrealistic, so let's focus on the server. That's That seems like a tangible goal. It said there is a way to the server. But what did it mean about putting the world in danger? Jeez, it raised as many questions as it answered. No kidding. Damn it! On top of this, our death clock might run out tomorrow. No matter what we do, we need to find a way to get rid of all the demons. There's no time to waste. Let's go, everyone! Alright, oof, that's a... That's a bit of information overload that we've gotten today, so... Yeah, I think I'm pretty close to <laughs> just spent on all the information that I can hail, and I think that's a good spot to end this video. When we come back, of course, we have a couple more events to check out before we can move on with the day. In particular, we've got this one at the Shomunkai facility that's a mandator mandatory event to check out, so we'll definitely want to take a look at that. One thing I want to bring attention to before this video closes, though... So, we got the answer uh, regarding the UEM field. We know what it's all about, and we know that that is responsible for the cataclysm for uh, wiping out the Yamanote Circle in the next two days. But, I do want to clear up, clear up a very common misconception about this side quest. Uh, I see this mentioned a lot in guides on this game, and a lot of people seem to think that you need to do it, but uh, the UEM field is actually not required to get Atsuro's ending. I remember uh, mentioning this uh, on day 3 when we were doing the 10-bit events, but you do not need to follow this quest line in order to get Atsuro's ending. In fact, the thing that you need to do to get Atsuro's ending is save Keisuke. As long as Keisuke is alive by the time day 6 rolls around, then you can get Atsuro's ending. Regardless Regardless of how you save Keisuke, so I just want to clear that up, make sure we know that going forward. Uh, literally the only thing you need to do to get Atsuro's ending is make sure Keisuke's alive. So yeah, just want to make that established, and that's where we're going to end this video. As always, hope you enjoyed watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Until then though, goodbye.